Hello, my friends. I am so excited you are here for this episode of The Mind of Reese. This one is a special episode. I have my guest speaker here, Stina, who is an educator of passive income streams as a tattoo artist. She also is very well knowledgeable in this industry, having been in this industry for 20 years. So she's been through it all. And we just go down the rabbit hole of conversation. This was one of my favorite conversations I've ever had. But before we get into that, I do want to say that this week is the last week to get it on. Unfuck withable. It is time to master walking with your fears so that you can put two feet in to your business. It's really talking about how to play that inner game on this three-dimensional material world and how we can utilize these energetics in order to create the possibilities and potential that we so desire in this three-dimensional world. No longer playing material versus material. We're talking about playing in a different field, the fifth dimension, energetics, emotions versus the material. And that, my friends, is what creates quantum leaps, quantum successes. But we have to know how to walk through these things, understanding the energetics, understanding the emotions, creating emotional mastery in order for us to get to where we want to go faster, collapsing time between where we are and where we want to be. So this is your last week. We start on Saturday. So if you want in, we anybody listening to this will get it at 444. You DM me and let me know you want in. You will get it at 444. It is at $1,111 as of right now. So if you want in, you can still get it at 444. Or if you want to go for the higher price, not only will you get Unfuck Withable, but you will also get Booked Out. You will get my mini reels, my mini reels course content magnetism all for free a $999 value free with the purchase of unfuck with a bowl at 1111 so you take a choice babe otherwise I will invite you to sit down bump us up in your car you are going to get a whirlwind of conversation this I it was funny because I tried stopping it at 45 minutes and then all of a sudden we kept going on a tangent and then it turned into an hour and a half so pause it save it from wherever you're at let me know if you're feeling the vibes if you're like holy shit I want to learn more I love this woman I think she's absolutely amazing and I absolutely will be having her back to have her teach uh, my students in the inspired vortex and if you are not in the inspired vortex and want to be in the inspired vortex well come and get one one of my programs you are more than welcome to be invited into it (laughs) so uh yes come on in we're talking about passive income we're talking about um the future of tattooing we were talking about the history of tattooing we're talking about our own journeys we're talking about the things that have been happening on the internet like tattoo gatekeeping so all of this and more there's so much conversation there's so much overflow of knowledge wisdom from this woman she is a powerhouse and an inspiration and i can't wait to share with you her essence if you enjoyed this podcast episode please 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 give us a five stars if that feels called to you and if you do and you rate it take a screenshot post it on post your favorite one or this episode on your stories and I have been sending people care packages for anybody that has been rating this show because the more it gets rated the better it is for it to be pushed out to the world and this is how we grow organic community of course only if it feels called to you but if you end up doing it I will send you a care package from me um, with you know some goodies my favorite books I've, I've been sending like sometimes some of them candles and some um, it just depends like I just feel you out if I want to send you some tarot cards I send you tarot cards I send you inside like I just I just feel who you are out and then I just send what intuitively uh, feels right so I love connecting with you so if you're feeling the vibe post this share this with a friend I love you guys and I hope you love this episode Hey everyone, welcome to the mind of Reese. I am here with Sina. I'm so excited 
that you were here. And if you could just introduce yourself, what magic you bring to this world and to this industry, all the good stuff, and we could just jump right in. Um, hi, I'm Stina. I own Grim North Tattoo. I also own Laser Brain Patch Co., which is an art company, um, and Lapels and Spells, which is another art company. And I've been tattooing for about uh, 23 years now, 24 years. It's kind of like wishy-washy. <laughs> At this yeah. point, you could just be like a quarter of a century. <laughs> yeah, I know. It like depends on if you're like from your first tattoo or when you're officially licensed or, you know. Well, when do you, when do you, uh, when do you think it should be? Um, I did my first tattoo in May. So I always say that this is like my anniversary of the first tattoo that I ever did. Gotcha, which gotcha. Awesome. I always joke. I don't think so too. Yeah. So I always joke, it took me like five hours. And if I did that same tattoo now, it would be like 45 minutes. So <laughs> it's all you about like you refine it. <laughs> yeah, you learn and you grow, you re-implement, refine over time. And hopefully it doesn't take 20 years to like get to that point. But you just never know. You know, I'm sure you figured it out 45 minutes within the next couple of years prior after that. So um so I would love to well, one thing I do want to say, Stina, is that when I first met you at Jennifer Edge's seminar, um, when she held the seminar for the tattoo show Literary Inc., I was like, I had no idea what journey you were going to walk me through. And I was like, holy shit, like this woman's got it down. <laughs> like she's nailed it. <laughs> and when it comes to like utilizing your art, not just for tattoos, like it totally opened my perspective. And don't get me wrong. I know that there's a lot of people out there that think of like stickers and um, art prints and, you know, but like the way that you have done this and built a business um, from this other perspective was just, it was really inspiring. And that's why I was like, oh, I really would love for her to talk to, to shout her messages from the rooftop so that you could really just like inspire others that like, you know, our tattoos don't have to just be like a one and done piece of art. And I'll let you speak it. You speak it way better than me, but that was just one of the biggest inspirations I found. And that's why I was so happy that you were like, yeah, I'll come on the podcast. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah. So tell us about your journey on, well, really like when did you decide that you, you know, like your art could be more than just a tattoo. And I know a lot of people think this, but you like took action. And that's like, I think the difference between thought and action. So please let us know. So I think, um, I think everybody as, as tattooers, as artists, we all kind of explore. We say, okay, I'm going to try making jewelry. I'm going to try weaving. I'm going to try. And we make all these things. And, um, we as tattooers were uniquely qualified for like any job you have to learn how to run a business you have to learn how to do finances you have to learn how to do time management like we're just uniquely qualified for like any art job um, and if you look at what we do and what a graphic artist does like we're doing the same job as them but somehow doing it on bodies so we're just like qualified for like all of these jobs um and what happened to me and I know this happened to lots of other people is that COVID happened we all got mm. shut down for months um and I was on the board of tattooing in New Hampshire and we were literally calling and messaging daily being like what can we do how can we open we are losing money we're going to lose our businesses I was watching my bank account like drop down like we all were you know um and the state I think what really like kind of uh what really kind of happened to me is the state was like you're not a priority there's not enough tattooers to matter to us um and they they didn't use like nice words than that. They were like, you're just not a priority, <laughs> you know? And so you, you come to a place where you're like, 
well, but I'm a priority for me because I don't want to be homeless and live in a ditch. Right. So I started being like, all right, well, um, what can I do? Like what, what options do I have? And I had a side business that I like made art and I made pins and I made like prints just like, you know, everybody else. And I just was like, how can I, how can I switch my focus? How can I start working in a different way? Um, so I just started making a lot more and putting a lot more energy into that. And that's kind of, you know, like all of us as tattooers, um, I'm trying to think of how to word it. Um, <laughs> uh, we all like, we all like have this passion. You can't just be a tattooer and be like a passive artist. The entire apprenticeship programs that we have, the entire way that tattooing works is you have to fight to, to have this job. Like it is a really hard job to have. Um, and I mean, it's an amazing job, but it takes a lot of work to get where we are. Um, and so when you take that energy and you put it into something else, um, a lot of times I think you just end up coming out on top because like I said, we're uniquely qualified to just be really good at what we do. Mm. So, yeah. So that's kind of how I, how I got into this. Holy shit. You gave me like full body chills when you were like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, this woman, um, you, when you said that, you know, to become a tattooist is really hard and they make it really hard, especially in the beginning, you know, and depending right. when you started 20 years ago, I right. know it was way harder for you than even for me, which was 12 years ago. And it was still hard enough for me. And even as we get closer, it's still like, there's still horror stories. Of course we hear them. And so, you know, for you, and it, when you said that, you're just like, we have this wherewithal and this gumption to get shit done so when you put that energy into something else we're going to get on top and to anybody that's listening to this like <laughs> that is honestly so inspirational and just like a reminder for everybody that you know being an entrepreneur but being a tattoo artist entrepreneur it's because it's very different than just you know an entrepreneur just in general um you know it's really like holding a vision of a future that does not exist yet. And so you just held tight and you fucking ran with it. And that's incredible because when I think of prints and pins, I think of a lot of work and exhaustion. And it does not like that, that in an, like you changed my whole perspective on it because I was like, I, for me, I had no idea that the things that you could create with that I thought you had to be like the most grand artist you know in galleries know a bunch of people like your network is your net worth and kind of vibe and no rich people to buy certain things and so for me it felt daunting and it felt like a like a path that like just seemed much harder than becoming a tattoo artist so what like where did you start you just you said you already had the like the art business on the side but like where did it really click for you that this could be something much bigger than you could have imagined? So I started the art aspect, gosh, um, about seven years ago, actually. Mm -hmm. So of course, COVID, you know, was kind of somewhere in the middle of that. So about seven years ago, I started making pins and um, prints and, you know, like most of us have been making stuff throughout our careers, but I started making a little bit more. Um, and it was because a, uh, the website started coming up that we're doing like subscription boxes. And I was like, this sounds fun. Like I'll make a subscription where I pick a theme every month and customers can subscribe and they get like one pin in the month in the mail a month. Um, so I started just doing that and I had, I don't know, maybe 20 subscribers. Um, and then I started like a second little subscription and it's easy because you just pick a theme and like, we're all artists. So like you can think of anything in like five seconds, you could be like a butterfly. You can think flowers, you can think 
donkeys for Christ's sakes. Like you could literally pick any theme and you just put the theme out there and then you kind of like wait for people to choose, you know, like I love donkeys. I'm going to get into that. I feel like people actually would get into that, but um, you kind of pick the theme and wait for people to come. And as time went on, I just ended up with like five or six like subscriptions that are small and it's easy because it's easy to draw five or six things a month and pop them in the mail. Um, so I started with kind of like a small amount. And then um, as time went on, I started making kind of like more stuff. So when COVID happened, I didn't have, there was no point in posting on social media for tattooing. Um, and I saw some people were trying to hold that for it. But I was like, every time I post, it's just all my customers being like, when are you going to come back to work? Which was like incredibly depressing. I think most of us were depressed. Um, as someone who had been tattooing for 20 years, um, I was shockingly depressed um, because in tattooing, we're encouraged to make our job our personality. Um and I had had like, I'd been working like crazy hours for so many years. Um, so when you are, when you come at it from that view and then all of a sudden everything's gone and you're like, who am I? Um, I was like, I just need to kind of abandon my tattoo Instagram for like a little bit, just to like get some space from that like de depressing scene. So I started putting my energy into my art Instagram and I found, cause I have two separate ones. Um, and I found that the people there are way more fun. Um, <laughs> you know, they're like way more fun. They're way more like, there's a lot of people who are there who are out in the world that want to make connections and they want to like get to know you and get to know your art and they want to support you so putting my time and energy into that um just really created like a cooler environment and the more I put my energy in the more they put their energy back into me um and it's very like you know like very patronesque like people are happy to like put their money into your art if they know you so the more that I just like did that that I just like was like what do you guys think they'd be like what do you think and back and forth so um I realized it could be a thing when I created as silly as this is I created these little tiny jelly bean pins and I like put different patterns and prints on them and I sold a lot like like a shocking amount like a really really shocking amount and customers were so excited and they were messaging me and they were like come do this outside event and come do it. Like, we want to like meet you. We want to do things. And so I started kind of doing events and doing craft fairs and stuff and people would travel. Um, and I realized that we had built a community. So, and that's when you build that community, that's when you like really create something special, I guess, I guess you could say. Um, but I mean, it's the same if you look at any artist that you love, like if you look at the artists on Instagram, they aren't just an artist. They always have a community. They have like people that are like messaging. You see the same people. Um, they have people that buy all their prints, all their art. So really it doesn't have to do with like just your art ability, but it has to do with your community ability, I guess. Yeah, no, I, I think that's like hitting the nail right on the head because what you've done, and I love that, uh, you know, you made a really good, beautiful um, mention that you have them separate as your Instagrams because it is, it's yeah. like, yeah. And, and I'd love for you to touch, touch on that a little bit more, but, um, but what I love is that you are separating the community because there are some people that love pins and some people that love tattooing and if you put them together it's not everybody's gonna love everything it's more just like here's this really niche idea that I love and I've created this space for this particular type of idea and it's like the jelly beans and another one another story you told me or you told us and I swear you were talking to me when I was like sitting there like 
<laughs> when I was at your seminar, I was like, oh my God, the cat poop thing. I was like, what? <laughs> so that was a great story. But, um, but yeah, it was just, it's like you're creating these, like the parts of you that are, you know, like there's still all of you, but it's like, there's these parts of you that you're like niching down almost. And you're just like busy. These are people that really love this stuff. And I want to hang out with these people for a little while and create for them and see what happens. And then it becomes like a collaborative effort. And that's what I think, you know, you end up just building over time and not even realizing how much it compounds um, because people get to know you, they love your art, they know you through your art, but then they also get to like talk with you and you become very touchable almost in some in some type of way. And so I think that that's like, you create that emotional connection and that I think is really beautiful. Um, so, mm -hmm. so that's, I, I, I love that. And I, and also like, like I was saying, why, you know, creating the two separate, what, what is your idea behind that? So, I mean, I think that's actually really important in every tattooer that I know that I've been like, create a separate account. They get very like, I have 20,000 followers and I don't want an account with 300 followers, but, um, you know, having, having the tattoo account, the way that our algorithms work, the way that Instagram al algorithm works, the way that TikTok algorithms work, like all of those algorithms are literally just pushing forward the people who are commenting or who are interacting with you. And those people are going to see everything first. And if those people see it and they don't comment or they don't like, or they're not excited about it, it won't show it to more people. So when you're putting something, you say, here's a photo of a tattoo, all your customers who are getting tattooed the most are going to be the ones who are commenting or liking or sharing the most, right? Like those interactive, your actual customers. So your tattoo page is great because it's going to interact with the people who give you money, right? Mm -hmm. who, who interact with you, who support you, who give you money. If you start putting just prints in there, the people who get tattooed by you aren't necessarily the people who want to hang up art by you. So you are kind of accidentally filtering out your customer base by sharing your other art, because now it's starting to get people who are commenting on that, people who maybe they're just into home decor. Mm. Maybe they're just into pins. Maybe they're just, so you start watering down your own customer base. And so what I always say is, what's the purpose of your Instagram? So my tattoo Instagram actually doesn't have a ton of followers because I'm not trying to get Instagram famous. And that's my own choice. You like, it depends on your purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, my purpose is that I want my community to be like really strong. So I have a large group of people who comment, like, and share on my Instagram and I'm booked for a solid like year. So I don't need more than that because I don't physically have the ability to do more than that. So I have a nice, strong Instagram base. It's small, but they're all my actual customers. Whereas I have a separate account for my art. And when you have that separate account for your art, um, the thing that happens is that people don't really want to follow art pages for no reason. They follow them because they like your art. They're not just like, oh, here's a funny donkey meme like back for the donkeys um but they're like they're not like here's a funny donkey meme they're like here is a piece of art that I connect with so they follow your page so you can have 500 followers but if 100 of those people are buying your art that's a lot of money like that actually is a lot of money so it doesn't matter how many followers you have. It matters that they're your, they're there specifically for your products. And that's really like, like, that's, what's really important. And I have my laser brain account and my lapels and spells account. My lapels and spells, I think has like 15 K followers. My laser brain has like 30,000. And if I post something on both of those accounts, they both have similar sales. 
And the reason is because the lapels and spells is more goth. It's like my more goth, like witchcraft page. And I have a really, I have less of those people, but it's a really strong following. I do a lot of like craft fairs and I do like a lot of like events and I live in New England. So it's like all witchcraft up here all the time. So you ha have a much stronger following. Whereas Laser Brain has 30,000 followers and it does have a really strong following, but um, it has like a wider range of interests. So we've got a wider range of customers purchasing things, if that makes sense. So the amount of people don't matter, but having those niches, like I said, I think that's actually really important because then you know the people that are there are literally there to spend money. And I know that if I put up a design, if I put up a piece of art, if I put up a pen, I know that I absolutely will get sales for every one. Whereas if I put up a piece of, I can post the same pin on all three accounts and I can look at where, where I'm getting the comments, where I'm getting the views and where I'm getting the sales from in the tattoo page, as far as like any art sales, it's dismal what I get from that page. Like I literally can put something up and sell two from the tattoo page sell 30 from the laser rain page and sell 20 from lapels and spells and be like there we go that's like a huge difference do you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah no absolutely i think it's incredibly i love that i think the biggest thing is the one of the biggest reasons why i started this uh podcast was helping people with their social media and the idea around more equals more is like it's so influencer style thinking. And, and if that's your jam, you know, definitely. But as an entrepreneur, there's a totally different way to look at Instagram or social media just in general. And so when you look at it from a perspective of like strong community based, who is actually buying the product, who is buying the tattoo, who is buying the art, you know, these are two different types of people. And when we treat it as such, we can actually create a better stronger community with less people because we don't need a hundred million people to be booked out like that's like you said you cannot physically do that because it's a one-on-one -on -one standpoint but when it comes to like your other like tighter um, lapels and spells and laser brain these two things even though they're very different you know like you said you're like you're still getting almost similar um revenue in like income because of how tight the community is. And I think that that's just, oh, it's like it's like perspective shifting on how we utilize the social media and what's really important. You know, not the number, not the follower count, not the likes. It's more about the community and create and building those relationships. And so I, yes, all day. Thank you for that. Um, and it's hard. It's hard to look at those numbers and be like, I have 30,000 followers and 75 looked at this today yeah. like that's disappointing mm -hmm. um and I think it's harder in tattooing because you don't have something to show for it you literally like you you do your tattoo that day and so you put post your picture and you don't get anything when when you only get those seven you're like I feel like nothing happened whereas if you mm. have a sales page and it says 75 views and you're like, oh, that's sad. I only have 75 views, but you get 20 sales. You're like, actually, that's a great percentage. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a little harder. And I feel like tattooing, it feels more painful, um, but your stuff is being seen. You're getting customers from it. It's just a little bit harder to, to measure. Oh, no, I, I think that's a great thing to bring up too, because you're absolutely right. Like when you post something like a tattoo, it's the longevity. It's like realizing that you have to lengthen your time horizon on the return on investment. So it's like, that's, that's what makes it so hard. I think for tattooers to stay the course on social media, because they don't see that quick return. Whereas like with a product, you see it a little bit faster, especially if it's on a sales page, you see someone, you, you get money in the, in the bank while you're at home and you're just like, okay, that's really awesome. And so, um, so I really, I think that's a really beautiful thing to bring up because it, it, it is hard. And so when, like, is there any advice that you would actually offer when it comes to that? Is it like, for me, I would just say like, almost like lengthen the time horizon, understand that the return on investment does come 
when you are committed and you stick with like, instead of, because I think what ends up happening is people try to start, they start to turn and they start to try to post things that people like and start to do things yeah. and kind of move away from like, even their style of tattooing, they really enjoy and like, oh, well, this person gets a lot of likes because of this style of tattooing. I should do more of this right. fine line stuff that's, you know, really in right now. And so what kind of advice would you even mention on that aspect? Uh, I'd say, so having tattooed for this long, one of the things that I think is really cool is when I tattoo people, I actually ask them how they found me and how long they've been following me on social media. If they say they're, they follow me on social media, um, which of course most, most do, because that's just how the world works. Um, and you would be surprised how long ago a lot of people like started following you. Um, I have my customer I tattooed the other day. She started following me like five years ago, she said, and she has just not been in a place to get tattooed or she didn't have something that she felt like I really needed to do um, for like five years. So you be surprised I think how long that can really take especially like younger tattooers because five years when you've only been tattooing for two years feels really hard to hard to swallow right so I think that um when you see your career like laid out in a long long piece and you see that you might have a customer and she just you know, she just spent a lot of money with me and she has a second one booked. So when you see that and you say, okay, well, this took five years for this person to come back to me, but of course that's worth the money. Um, it just takes a lot of time. And the other thing is that tattooing for this amount of years, I'm now tattooing the third generation of family members. So I tattooed people, you know, when I first started, I was in a, like a biker shop. So I tattooed all these like older bikery dudes with like sick eagles, um, <laughs> a lot of Harley Davidson logos, a lot of, a uh, lot of like old school stuff. Um, and then when their children turned 18, um, they brought them in and now their children's children are 18. Um, and I'll be totally like, there's a, couple a couple of those third generations that now have like 14 and 15 year olds mm -hmm. so it won't be long before I'm tattooing the fourth generation so it's nice to remember that that you can continue to build these relationships for the life of this person and their entire family mm -hmm. well I think when it comes to that and now with with what you've created on these, you know, like these passive income streams is what it is. It's now more of a choice instead of a means to an end, right? Tattooing for you as opposed to like, cause I'm, I'm sure you don't work those long, like the 12 hour, eight to 12 hour days. Like I remember working, but now it's like you created this, um, you know, other business, this other passive income through the tattooing, through the artwork, through the knowledge that you've learned and experience you've learned through, you know, your life as an artist. And this actually helps support you at, on a physical, mental, emotional, I'm sure, and spiritual standpoint, because of now you don't actually, you get to choose who you tattoo. And I'm sure the year long, you, your, your year long is actually mostly return clients, you know? And so you've built these relationships yeah. over 20 years, but now at this point, you're really getting to just choose when, how long, and all these other things that you, that you get to do now. Yeah. I'm like, I, I actually do have a ton of return customers, which is wonderful. Um, but I tattoo usually about three days a week now. Um, and I actually, it's usually about eight hour days. Um, and I think that for me, like my, my love is tattooing, mm -hmm. but of course our bodies, like our bodies don't, don't always cooperate tattooing this long. Like I'm literally the shape of a shrimp. Like most of the time it's hard. It's hard to like 
treat your body right while you're working eight hour days. Mm -hmm. Um, so I definitely, my goal is to be able to have more time to tattoo, but also while I'm sitting there doing a tattoo, my store is selling stuff Mm -hmm. and I'm able to, uh, make that income while tattooing, but also make that income from my other job and say at some point we're physically not able to tattoo anymore so my goal isn't to stop tattooing my goal is to have another job that can continue to make money even when I'm physically unable to tattoo this much and you know ultimately all my art that I'm making for the shop can continuously be sold for the rest of my life and into my kids life or beyond that you know Mm -hmm. and this is like building this like bigger than me kind of energy it's just like for you the tattooing like because it's the same thing for me like I love tattoo like I can't I love it like I'm obsessed and I'm obsessed with the fact that there's no ceiling I love art I think it's wonderful and education for me on the side has been such a beautiful avenue that I've been able to kind of create in a different way But it's also like what you said, it's like, it's not, I'm not trading. I don't want to trade. I still love my tattooing and I still love art, but I'm just trying to help myself create longevity for that, but also create something else that continues to build even generationally, like you said, like for your kids. And so um, when, how would you like recommend people, you know, getting started, especially what the way I love is that you're like my piece of art doesn't only have to be a one and done anymore. And I think that that's beautiful because when I look at tattooing, that piece of art goes on that person. That's it. I don't tattoo it again because I, you know, that's just my moral compass. I just won't do that. And so, you know, I love the idea of the fact that like that actually doesn't have to be the end of that piece of art. Yeah, I think that that's actually something really important to think about and talk about because, um, and I know you were in the seminar, so I'm going to pretend you weren't and just talk about this. Um, but <laughs> yeah, but when we talk about a painting, like if a painter creates a painting, um, the painter sells that painting to a person, they hang it up in their house. And of course, they're not going to turn around and repaint that painting. That would be incredibly rude to like make knockoffs of a painting that someone spent thousands of dollars on. Uh, but they make prints, they sell those prints, and those prints might be $30, $50, as opposed to the 4000 that that person paid for the original painting. Um, and they might take that art and they put it on a pair of leggings. They might take that art and put it on a notebook. They might turn it into wallpaper. There's artists now are just so creative with how many ways they can spread their art because it's really hard to actually like you said create longevity on a single painting and you know um no one is like it's immoral to make prints like yes there is a certain level of like you probably want to make them limited edition or you want to create it you want to create some exclusivity for those prints but at the same time it's not immoral to make prints of your own art Um, and when we talk about tattooing you make this really amazing piece of art and you say oh I drew this up like I made this big beautiful butterfly and floral piece that's just gorgeous and you put it on your person's body and they pay for that to be on their body they don't take your art and turn it into t-shirts and say, well, I bought this art, so I own it now and I can make t-shirts. Just like the person who bought your painting doesn't get the rights to make prints. Um, They bought that one painting that goes in the wall. Your customer bought that one tattoo of the butterfly and florals as a tattoo. They paid for a tattoo. So if you take that art and you remake it, maybe make some tweaks, and you make it into leggings, you make it into wallpaper, you make it into other things, it's not immoral. And I mean, you'll find what you feel comfortable with. So not everyone is going to agree with me. But it's not immoral, like me making a, a wallpaper of butterflies and flowers doesn't affect that person's tattoo. 
It doesn't take away from their tattoo in any way. It doesn't make it less special, but it does make it so that you can continue making money because um, as we've seen, like the time that we're putting into our drawing is excessive and people are starting to look for other options. They're saying, well, I'm spending 20 hours on a drawing and then I'm tattooing it for 10 hours and it's just not financially working for me right now. So how do you survive? Do you charge drawing fees? Do you have the whole internet come for you? Do you like, what do you, right? Like, what do you, what's your plan? So I feel like, I feel like you kind of have to like find a way to continue making money. If you're putting 20 hours into that drawing, you should be able to continue making money. And maybe it's making wallpaper. Maybe it's making pins. Maybe it's making t-shirts. Um, and I'm not saying copy it exactly because obviously people's bodies are shaped in ways that might not translate well, but you can translate that art and make it into a shape that's a little different, move some things around and make it into a piece that you can sell in other ways, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, and then the, the nice thing about that is, say you do a tattoo of butterflies and flowers and you do that big, beautiful tattoo and then you make a pin of it, you make wallpaper of it, you know, like you adjust it, maybe change the colors, you know, you make it a little bit more unique you make wallpaper of it, you make a pin of it, make a t-shirt of it, you can continue selling that forever. You can have that wallpaper for 200 years selling, selling it. Like your kids can sell your wallpaper. And even if you only sell one pin a week, one pin a month, that's $12 every month for the next 30 years. For the next 40 years as opposed to that one tattoo that you did that is now gone and it's also hard because we've all tattooed people who have passed away we've tattooed people who immediately went out and got a sunburn we've tattooed people where we try to take photos of their tattoos and they just the photos just look like shit because we're not photographers and it's actually really hard to take photos so we're just constantly putting all this time and energy into art and then just like putting on people's bodies and saying, you're not allowed to replicate this, but also I'm not going to replicate it. Uh -huh. So we just kind of have to find a way to recycle that art and reuse it in a way that that 20 hours, maybe we add two more hours and we can now sell it sell another thousand dollars worth of products or two thousand dollars worth of products and so that's kind of my goal is to go through my portfolio of 24 years and to every time I draw something to figure out ways that I can draw it without making it exactly like the customer's art and um, use that energy to kind of like create other sources of income yeah I, and so, so you do actually do like little tweaks to it. I was like, I'm like, for me, if I think about like, I just, I, I gave out free stickers at um, conventions when I go and they're of my art pieces that people are really obsessed with, especially the ones that like of the tattoos, but they're free. So I'm like, yeah, here, it looks totally different on someone's body than in a, in a sticker form, but I don't really change much if I know that it's going to look good as a sticker just in general. But um, so like, do you, do you find that is like toe in the line or what do you, I actually, do you, you know, what, like, I guess I feel like what's the reason that you wouldn't do it? Like, yeah. so whenever I'm like coming up with a plan for anything, I'll be like, what's the pros and cons? Like, what's the reason? Like, if I made, I'm going to just keep using this example. If I made this butterfly and floral piece for someone, um, why wouldn't I? make a sticker of it so mm -hmm. for you you do more like a little more realism mm -hmm. so why wouldn't I make a sticker of that well the idea is that someone could copy it right like people are like well I don't want to put it on art out there because someone could copy it well I'm not really responsible for what someone else does like that sucks I don't want them to copy it but I also am not responsible just like 
you can't be responsible if someone like takes your t-shirt and then they rob a store while they're wearing it like you kind of like you you can put your art out there and you can be like this is my art we all know everyone knows you're not supposed to copy people's art and that's all you can kind of do with it most of the tweaks that I'm making are just like just to like like if a customer is like oh I really like really pink flowers and I'm like well I personally probably would have went with like a warmer like orangey tone so I just make changes or I might add more leaves to it because somebody's body shape doesn't like work as well for a sticker if that makes sense so I'm not necessarily making I'm not necessarily making changes because I'm like it has to be unique I'm like Mm -hmm. I'm making changes because I'm making changes for the sake of the art for the sake of making the art a better piece if that makes sense for absolutely stickers versus body it's two different mediums Mm -hmm. and that's an important thing to remember like you said it's two totally different mediums Mm -hmm. so that's what the changes are Okay. I see. I, I was like, cause for me, I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> there was a moment of like panic. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Am I, should I be tweaking some stuff? No, but I, I totally agree. I think that it, dependent on the canvas, dependent on what you're doing, dependent on the medium, whatever it is, like make it, you know, put in some work, think about it, you know, what, what looks good, what matches you and this side of it. And then what matches like, cause over here on the collaborative aspect with a client, someone getting a tattoo, it, you know, we are creating a service for that particular person. So if we thought warmer oranges were better, but they wanted a pinker tone, huzzah, do it. And right. so, yeah. And then like, but with a sticker, I'm going to be like, but I like the orangey one. So I'm going to make the sticker with the orange. So I totally, right. I think that that's really beautiful. And I think that honestly, those are just super quick changes, especially with technology today. Changes could be five minutes. It like doesn't have to take long to like create something that could just be a little, a little tweak so that you can create um, longevity and artwork on the pin right. sticker side of things. And so, or if you're, um, if you're making something that's like a sleeve, it's mm-hmm. like very long and thin. So I might take the butterfly and flowers and just change the layout, but use mm-hmm. the same butterfly and the same flowers and just kind of shift and move them. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, yeah, because I think about it from a, you know, we're always looking at it. Body composition is totally different from a square canvas composition to, right. you know, whatever else that you're creating. So I know I totally agree. And I think that to keep that in mind is um, is beneficial to everyone. Um, as far as like, so when you started, I love the fact that you're, you're talked on like the subscription boxes, which is so cool. And that's how you started. And that you know, even if you're selling just like one a month and you're making $12 a month, that's $12 a month for 30 years, it's compounding. Like I just, the mindset is so huge on that, on that to really just to keep going. I think, I think, cause a lot of people will see $12 a month. That's nothing. I should just quit kind of vibe. And yeah. so how did you like really stick to your guns? Like what was it that really just helped you like continue to move forward I think having an accountant um that sounds <laughs> that sounds like very uh, nerdy but I think when you have an accountant and like um your accountant literally just makes like a a, a wheel of your expenses and your profits and says uh and my accountant gives me a couple checkups every year and he says um he said well this year you made this amount of money last year you made this amount of money um you're making a large amount of money from this specific resource um and it's really starting to grow look how like and he'll just like we'll have a meeting like once a year and he'll just lay everything out for me and that I think for me helped because sitting down and looking and being like oh over this time this made more money than tattooing um so and at that point like when I started making I started making about the same amount um as tattooing that was when I was putting a like a little less energy in and so I'd be like oh I'm only doing this for like 10 hours a week and I'm making almost the same amount as like 50 hours a week at this other job um 
because while I'm sleeping, I'm selling items. While I'm on vacation, like I just took a vacation and I came back. And even though I had shut down most of my stuff, um, I think I had like a couple days it was open and I made like 2000 bucks. So you're like, it's nice to be able to keep selling stuff. And it's not like it's like, like a, a, I'm trying to like word this, but I think a lot of people make these promises, like you're going to get free money if you, uh, and you'll be laying on a beach and uh, drinking a margarita and you'll be having free money where it's like, of course, nothing's free money. Like it does take work. But the difference is that with tattooing, you put it on your drawing time and then you physically have to put your butt in a seat and physically do the work and then clean up and then the money gets put into your account. Like you have to physically be present and physically be using your body. And so it's a different type of money because you take, you take that, you physically design, you, you make all that stuff, you order the items you get the items in and then you can go on vacation while your website's on and you're just selling stuff. And then you come back from vacation, you pack those orders and you ship them, or you have someone else do that depending on how you're, how you're feeling. But um, at the end of the day, yes, it's still work. You're still doing work, but it just affords you a little more freedom. If that makes sense, it gives you a little more flexibility. And that's something that like, we've never had with tattooing. Like most of us spend the first 10 years of our careers working, uh, you know, 10 AM until 12 PM on Saturdays, you know, Mm -hmm. like we just work every minute of every day on the weekends and it's exhausting. So it's nice to be able to be like on Saturdays, I don't work instead or I only work like a certain amount of Saturdays and instead I just make some Instagram posts being like go to my website and buy stuff and you can be making as much money as tattooing while you're literally on the beach not because you're not doing the same work but because the work is able to be shifted to different places if that makes sense yeah yeah it's definitely you're just there's an efficiency aspect to yeah. it whereas like you're no longer trading time for money right because like, with tattooing that's all we're doing is just trading the time for money now we're like right. shifting our time and creating something that's why I mean you know a lot of people have dislike social media and the internet but I'm like well actually it's a really beautiful way to to like grow things that yeah. you know we never would have been able to before where everything was just word of mouth and you've been through all of it. You've been through word of mouth to <laughs> internet to, you know what I mean? So you've seen it on, you've had to shift gears every time something new came in, instead of sticking to the old school way of being like, no, I refuse. I'm going to do this my way. You know, I know a lot of guys, even the guys that I was, that taught me are still like iPad. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> I, stop with the, you know, tracing paper over like 20 pieces of the tracing paper, this stacked and then retracing and doing it that way. But um, just efficiency of time, I think is really important because then it does yeah. offer us more space to be even more creative in the tattooing that we do get to do now. And I think that that right. for me is, is a big, is a big piece because I like that freedom and flexibility to be able to put my energy where I want and then utilizing that same, well, you're utilizing that similar energy into the tattoo and the design to put it over here. And I think that that's like the most beautiful thing is that, and the most beautiful piece of awareness for people is that so they can understand that all of that work you've been doing, you actually can reuse it and repurpose it into something else. And I think that's very efficient <laughs> and very, and like, it's really, it's just smart. It's just smart business. And so, um, yeah, no, I appreciate that. So any, like, what's like the last giveaway that you would offer uh, to artists that are now like thinking about, I mean, you've opened up their perspective on this. You've opened up their minds to, wow, my art can actually be repurposed and do more. What would be like the next steps you would offer them? Um, I feel like everyone feels really intimidated. um, And it's, it's also feels very exhausting. Um, because we put so much time and energy into tattooing, it feels exhausting. And when you do a tattoo and you sit down and you do the drawing and you're like, this is going to be a 10 hour tattoo. So I 
don't want this to be a 20 hour drawing, I feel like it creates some, I don't want to say corner cutting because that's absolutely none of us are corner cutting, but I feel like it creates this pressure to be better faster. And that kind of sucks some of that joy out of it for us. Mm. So I feel like instead of seeing this as like another thing on your plate of bullshit you have to do, um, I kind of feel like it's like, instead of, it's like expanding what you already are doing as opposed to adding another thing to your plate. So the nice thing is that you don't have to like just jump in and create this huge company and like, just like get going. You can just make something small. You can try making a pin. You can try um, making leggings. Like there's companies that make leggings. You can try uh, making phone wallpapers, like little freebie phone wallpapers for your customers. Like you can try something small and just take something you already have and just experiment with that and see how it feels and see how it works for you and kind of like just start small and you just start building a library, um, a library of your created things. So my library has, I don't know, maybe a thousand items in it that I can create or make. And a lot of those things might sell out and that's okay. I might not, I might be like, well, this didn't sell great. So I'm not going to make it right now. And in five years, I might decide to bring it back. But having that library and building that library is something that you can use for your entire life. So even if you don't feel like you want to um, jump right into this head first, like just make, just take, if you find something, even if, it, even if the smallest thing you do is just start creating a folder of art, you think that would be cool as other designs like just like start kind of planning start kind of making a plan for the future and being like uh is this something that I will like to make a painting later is this something that would make a cool skateboard is this something that would be leggings like just start kind of getting into that mindset of what else can this be for even if you decide not to make anything right now mm. That's awesome. I mean, for me, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, Ooh, I wonder, I'm like, I'm like, I have all of these things that I could totally create. There's like a plethora library of like yeah. scrollable library through even just the iPad that I'm like, yeah, that, that would just make just one little thing. And I love, I think the starting small aspect when you were like, it was just one pin, you know, one pin a month. That's all yeah. it was. And there were 20 people and that was it. And it didn't feel like crazy. It doesn't feel as daunting as it's, as yeah. it can sound and be when you just take it one step at a time and then just look at it from like a, a like long-term right. perspective. So, and I would order, you have to order like a hundred. So I'd order like a hundred and then I'd have those 80 pins to slowly sell. And, you know, after two years, you have 24 pins. Um, and those 20 people who paid, like it grew, it was, you know, it, it never will get like crazy big because it's, you know, it's a small craft, but, um, if you're having 20 people pay you, that's how much it costs to make the items. So it's almost like those items are free every month. And then if you sell any additional ones over the next year, that's all profit. Mm. So it's just like a slow way to build your art library in your item library well, item library plus like the community that you're building and right. really just like I think that that's like where you're really like fit in you know and the fact that you even separated like the goth to like the, the cutesy or you know it's just like yeah. that even in, in and of itself is really just cool because then you're like oh here let me focus on this community and what these people want and then if you decide yeah. that you're like I, oh I wanted to put more attention onto this and so there's like the small and then there's like, oh, what could be? And I think that those are just two beautiful things we get so much inspiration from you with. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I learned so much from, from like, from people like you, from people that really care and they just care. And you have this uh, beautiful mindset around like, you know, it doesn't have to be daunting. Like it can look like an expansion, like, you know, it can look like it's right, expanding. Yeah. And I think that that's just, 
cool way to look at life in general. So that's like my biggest takeaway. So I just wanted to to, to thank you again for your time and for just yeah, being no here problem. and sharing your knowledge. Yeah. Awesome. And I think, unfortunately, like everyone in tattooing has that mindset of like, we're all competing against each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, it's just so unhealthy and so bad for us. Um, So that's, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, everyone's so competitive. And it's like, really like, when we're making stuff, when we're making art, the more excited we get people, the bigger the community just grows and grows until it's normal to want art, to like art, to, to have art in your house. I mean, right now it's like target art is what most people have in their house. Literally (laughs) target art. Do you know what I mean? So it's like the goal is really like to make that not normal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I didn't even, I never even think about that. Like I don't, I, for me, it's not, I don't really even have much art. Like I just have like that thing and you're absolutely right. That thing came from like Target or something. So now <laughs> I now I got to change my shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's just more like people want peaceful spaces yeah. and it feels really intimidating and, uh, you know, but it's like, that's like the, the norm. So mm-hmm. it's, I feel like the more that we elevate each other, the more that we take care of each other, um, the more popular art in general will become it'll just get more popular, you know? Yeah. I think I I feel the same way about the tattoo world. It's just like, you know, it's, it's still, it's come a long way, but it still has a long way to go kind of vibes. And um, I think that, you know, with tattooing, even people still, you know, they, there's different ways that people look at the perspective of tattooing. And we're, I, I think that you know, one day it's going to be a fine art that you can get your BFA or MFA in. And I think that that would be fucking beautiful instead of it just only being painting and drawing and stuff like that. Like if someone wanted to go get a college degree with it, they can so choose if they decided to. So I think that that's kind of the idea. And I think it would be really beautiful. It's hard with tattooing because we're in a really toxic place right now. And Mm -hmm. I think it's like, you know, we've been in a pretty toxic place for a long time, but when you have this like just passed down you know because we hand it down we hand down tattooing like a family tree and just like in a family tree this generational trauma is being handed down to tattooers so we're in this really rough spot where I think some of us are trying to grow and just like in our lives like if you're like I'm emotionally ready to grow and your mom's like no I'm gonna keep putting this toxic bullshit on you that I've been giving you your whole life like you come to a place where you have to be like what do I do do I continue being a part of my family do I start putting up boundaries like and it's the same thing in tattooing some of us are willing to grow and some of us aren't and it's creating these I mean like that woman who tried that new system like you know like I made a joke about that but like she's being eviscerated and Russ Abbott is being eviscerated and all they did was try a new method. Well, she does seem like a scammer, to be fair. But um, <laughs> well, I think that, you know, I, I, it, with regards to this particular thing, like, I feel terrible for Russ Abbott because of the fact that it was a brand new thing. And I think the idea is really beautiful because it does offer tattooers like, yes, incentive to, co- to really make it a co-collaborative experience if that's what the client wants but I I don't even think that it's the right words though because because what they're doing is they're offering a finished piece yeah a finished piece of art so it's not even what they should what what it should be worded as is you can commission a fully collaborated upon piece of art and then get it tattooed Mm -hmm. because if you say it like that tattooers will be like yes having someone make me do a full painting and piece of art of a back piece and mm-hmm. literally stand over my shoulder and be like, move the wing to the left. That's <laughs> $6,000 or whatever. Right. Totally. But um, just the way that she presented it and the way that it's worded made it seem like a scam and tattooers are just like ready to eviscerate. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, and yeah. I and I think that's I think that's the I have, honestly I think that's what's what happens with um, people find you so inspiring, but they are so ready to be at your throat when you're when you when you make one little mistake, you know and. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think that that's where this whole competition and this, this judgment and this like, you know, trauma, this generational yeah. trauma of like, and I, this doesn't just go in this industry, but it definitely has stuck in this industry for longer than, it, you know, you expect. And, and it even comes from when you were even saying in 2020, where how people, you know, even the city is like, you're not that important to us. Like, no, they straight you know, up it. Yeah. it was a whole state. They were like, they were like, you're not a priority. Yeah. And I was like, but we need to pay our bills. So this is a priority for us. Yes, um, exactly. And it's actually, there's a second part of that story that I'll tell you real quick. It was, um, I worked with the health department and I worked with nurses and I came up with a system, a system that was what they, what they would let us tattoo with. And I was like, okay, we'll wear a mask. We'll wear a face shield. We will clean they were like, well, but customers use the bathroom. You can't make them not use the bathroom. And we're like, okay, then we will clean the bathroom after every customer. They're like, okay. And they're like, what about eating in this place? And we're like, no eating will happen in this place. So we had to come up with these insane rules. Like it took a lot. And we were like, I was like begging them. And they just kept being like, I think we're going to say no. And I'm like, what else can we do? What about scrubs? We'll wear scrubs. And they're like, oh, that would help. So I came up with this entire list of insane things to placate them and they let us tattoo and I got more hate than you would even fucking believe from the tattooers in my area being like, you ruined tattooing. And I was like, you bitches better kiss my ass because I'm the only reason that tattooing opened in this state. Mm. Um, and unfortunately it's because that's it did suck it was it was crappy it was frustrating like who the hell can wear a face shield while you're tattooing oh gosh no how can you sense. see through it yeah mm-hmm. it makes no sense but it was wear a face shield or don't tattoo and they said uh they were thinking six months so um but with tattooing I feel like everyone's so negative and so ready to come for each other it's so um carnivorous mm-hmm. you know no, I no I totally agree I think that the there is a level of difference of attention like where we're putting our energy and our focus and our attention yeah. is like all on each other to see if it fails or if it wins because if it wins I want to try it but if it fails then I'm gonna you know give you shit for it and I think that that's it's like we're all just trying to and that, and that make that makes change so hard in this industry because you're like so I don't even want to fucking do anything outside of right. because now you're just gonna fucking eat me alive or you're going to you know put me on a pedestal where I did something good but then the moment I you know like the moment right. I eat shit I'm gonna go viral on eating shit so it's, it's, it, right. it, it's, it's dangerous. really frustrating yeah. yeah it's really frustrating and it's like no wonder that this like you like you said generational trauma keeps happening and so for us to we have to have really strong fucking skin in order to yeah. even try anything new right it's and it's really just like rough. yeah it's really rough but I I mean honestly I think that you know it's it's like people like you who are just like fucking just fuck it you're like fuck it mode I know where my focus is it's me and my family and you know and it's really just like building something that really works for you and not like moving in any which direction that people are like you know if they give you shit you're just like well then that's the shit you want to give like I'm not I'm not here for it or whatever and I think that that's really hard for most people unfortunate you know and so but yeah especially tattooers because you know even even our Instagrams we we aren't really most of us aren't making it for the customer we're making it for each other like oh I hope these other tattooers see this I hope you know and it's kind of a joke that we have at my shop where I'm always like I don't want my Instagram to be a love letter to the other bros I want my Instagram (laughs) to get customers and literally I do not need like so your Instagram should be a love letter to the other bros because you're trying to teach so you literally are targeting tattooers tattooers. yeah um, I don't give a fuck about other tattooers because right. I, that's not who I'm, who I'm targeting. Right. Um, 
but I think most tattooers are somehow targeting other tattooers and not their actual customers. That's why you'll see like, uh, like someone will make a post and be like, did this tattoo of a flower, like more of these please. And you're like, ew, gross. That's not how you talk to your, you're saying that like, cause that's a cool thing to say in front of your bros, like more, yeah. than, right? <laughs> Yeah. Where it's like, That's instead, you should be example. like, thank you, Karen, for letting me tattoo your body. This is awesome. Yes. But, but people aren't talking agree. to their customers. Yeah. It's <laughs> You're like, talking to their bros. <laughs> that is such a fucking good way to see that. Like, right. super never... creepy, right? Yeah. It is. Well, every time someone's like, there's a skull tattoo, and I'm like, then it's a skull tattoo, and I'm like, because uh, you're treating me like I'm a fucking idiot because I can't see that it's a skull tattoo thank <laughs> you for the caption of the skull tattoo <laughs> like I don't fucking care that you're going to reiterate and I think that that's just it, it's, it is it's really interesting and I t- totally agree it is all about like who are we fucking speaking to like that's the message like right. who am I talking to and you know and if we can't even just get that clarity of course your business is not doing well. Like even right. if you were the best tattooer, it's like, of course, you're not as booked out as you like to be or making as much money as you want to be because you are not, you're not talking to the people that are getting tattooed. You're talking right. to your bros, which I fucking find so hilarious. Right. <laughs> it's so on point. <laughs> like, so on point. So one of my best friends is um, Chelsea Shonick. And we do like literary ink together and she has an insane amount of followers. She's world famous. She's just fucking amazing, right? Like everything she does is just so amazing. Um, But her Instagram is just filled with all of these like tattooers that are just there to try to steal her vibe, (laughs) like not to be a dick. It's just like, like half her, half her followers are just other tattooers that are just like, how does she tattoo for how does she tattoo this? Um, and the other half of the customers that are following her, like she's not great at Instagram. So like the other half that are following her, their posts are like, they're not seeing as much because oh, most of her followers are just these like tattoo people. Um, so when we both open our books, like she's absolutely booked, like, don't get me wrong. She's fully booked, but I'm as booked as she is oh, because yeah. we, are, we are only two bodies we're only physically able to tattoo at the same time. So, um, you know, I always say like, you know, to like friends, I'll like use her as an example where I'm like, it's not, she didn't get to choose who follows her. Like, that's not, you don't really get to choose who follows her, but her having that many people follow her doesn't do her any favors. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help her in any way. And really like the amount of people I've seen just straight up copying her art because she has that many followers like there's not really a pros to her having that many followers if that makes sense no it Um, does absolutely from a from a perspective of someone that has 168 like fuck off like I honestly tell people all the time if I could just delete everybody that just doesn't want to be here it it ruins the algorithm it totally does because what ends up happening is that the people that want to see certain things they're like um, you know, it definitely, it, and virality doesn't do well for you either because you do that one funny post that everybody liked and then they expect more of that funny shit, but you're not yeah. that funny. You only copied some other tattooer that did something funny. And then it was like, oh, but you trying to do recreate and reinvent the wheel and it's just not working. And so now what happens is that your, your algorithms all fucked up because it's not actually showing the people that actually want to pay you for your services. And right. so I totally agree. Like for me, like I know people that are fucking 10 figure earners in some entrepreneurial shit with 3000 followers, like, and a thousand dollar wait list, you know, or like, I'm sorry, email list. And it's like, I mean, a thousand, a thousand people email list. Like, it's like, it's crazy. So I think the follower count is just stupid. And I, yeah. I wish I could just cover that. And it doesn't have to be a thing because like, like you said, like your friend, it's like, her having a lot, people want to know why. And then they look at her art and they're like, they see why. And then they end up taking things that, you know, and just copying. And then that just ends right. up being like disheartening because you're like, why am I fucking here? Like right. I'm showing art because I want to 
inspire other people that want art to get art, but not all you fuckers out there who are just, you know, trying to cut corners because there are like, let's not fake it. Like people try to cut corners in the art world. And so just to make a dollar for today, but then they don't know what to do for themselves tomorrow. Whereas people like yourself and like Chelsea, they're like, I'm creating longevity. I'm creating a legacy. And not that we look at it like from like, oh, I'm a legacy. It's just more just like we're creating a lifetime's worth of work. Right. And that's the goal. Yeah. And that's the whole I don't goal. think that's I don't think that's an ego thing at all. I think that's no. like your goal is to create a lifetime's worth of work. That's like what we all, you know, when you're gone, you'd like to have that like pile of stuff. But also like when you're very old, like you need that stuff to support you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, I totally fucking agree. Like oh my God. You, if you have created classes, if you have online things, if you have resources that you've made when you're 95 and you're like pooping in your diaper or whatever, like someone's got to pay for those diapers and hopefully it's young you. Yeah. Yes. It's no. hopefully <laughs> it fucking is young me. And I think that's a big reason why it's like, don't look at one post is like, oh, it's just today. It's like literally someone can utilize that over time and get to know you through, you know, that one piece of content or that one piece of art or whatever it might be. And so I always am like, I look at social media too. It's like, I'm not just posting just to fucking post my art and get my bros to like it. I'm like, what can I say that's going to allow someone to want to be in this space? And whether it takes five years or it takes just tomorrow, you know, yeah. that's that's someone else's journey. That's out of my fucking hands. But at least yeah. I created something that was worth the idea of creating lifetime work and not just like, what can I get from it today? Or how can I, you know, force someone to to want this today? It's like, no, yeah. we're we're just creating something that, hopefully gets people to get to know you over time so that they want to be a part of like a diehard community that wants to buy from you. And And there's also, there's also children out there and that's like a silly thing, but there's also children out there, um, which I didn't fully comprehend until, um, gosh, maybe like five or six years ago, I had, I tattooed a young woman. I tattooed, I was doing a sleeve on a woman and she said that, um, she decided to get tattooed by me because when she was like six, she was in the grocery store with her mom and her mom saw me in the grocery store and said, oh, that's my tattoo artist. And her mom got like a butterfly because it was like back when I was like at a street shop. So her mom got like this like little simple flash butterfly. And um, I saw them in the store and she was like, oh, hi. And I was like, hey, how are you? And then I like looked at the little girl and I was like, ooh, cool shirt or something like that. And I said hi to her and I like, her mom turned around and I like stuck my tongue out at her or something. I always do that to kids. And then she like, (laughs) they walked away and what she got from it was that girl's super cool and she saw me. Mm -hmm. And kids get ignored so often. And like that kid grew up and like that one minute of me just being nice like shaped her and she was like I also want to be a weird tattoo lady (laughs) you know (laughs) like she was like that looks fun I would also like to be a weird tattoo lady but you know from that one grocery store experience of two seconds of just being nice and I hate being in grocery stores so like that's that's like funny but um you know (laughs) I probably made ten thousand dollars off her. Right. Do you know what I mean? So it's right. like that sort of stuff, like be like up. think about that shit and think about the shit that you're putting out there, not just the tattooing, the artwork, but who you are putting out yeah. there into the world. Because in that that affects people more when they feel like an emotional connection with you yeah. in some capacity, whether that be through an art or you commenting back on something nice, or you talking to them face-to-face or sticking your tongue out at like a six-year-old, you don't know what sticks. So it's like, who do you want to be? Who do you want to, how do you want to experience this life? And who do you want to be in the process of it? And I think that that is like the hugest question that everybody should be asking themselves, no matter what industry you're in, because like, that's, that's literally going to be the bread and butter. Like you said, the six-year-old, $10,000 later, like that's like mind blowing, but you've changed her entire perspective. Yeah. With 10 seconds. With 10 seconds. Oh, 
You're and just enough. being in this area for that long, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. a lot of people, a lot of people are scared to put down roots in tattooing, but like when you've been in an area for 20 years, like that just keeps coming back. It's like a cycle. Like I always joke that I'm like, oh, I'm a big fish in a small pond, but guess what? When you have one body and one physical ability, that, uh, that is your goal. <laughs> you don't want to be yeah. like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You're, only, you're yeah. only able to do so much. Exactly. And then now, but like you own a shop. So now you're almost helping anybody else within your shop grow as well. Because then that is like, you're like, yeah, I can't do all these people, but I have these people that I'm really close with here in this kind right, of community. Yeah. And I'm willing, and that are like, of like, like mine to me. So of course I want to see them succeed. And you're like, here you know what I mean? Like here, let me like help you. And so you end up sh collapsing time around where it took you 20 years, but maybe this time it'll take this person 10 and right. take this person five. Like, so you're just passing it all down. What, you know, your knowledge, your experience, who you mm -hmm. are, how you are. And I think that that's just like fucking beautiful. And the more people we can kind of ripple effect impact in that capacity, yep. the more this industry gets to change into something up leveled and expanded right. which I love the word that you use so fuck yeah and we have like and we have to you know like we were talking about that toxicity like mm -hmm. we have to when we're handing that down we have to like actively work on cutting that toxic viewpoint out of our own eyes because that's that's hard the culture of our industry doesn't like change and hate yeah. change, oh, yeah. want change. So yeah, yeah. it's hard. It is hard, and it's ex change is exhausting. And yeah. with the workload that we're expected to have, to also include change is really exhausting. So yeah. I understand why people don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like you know, like I said, like you said, actually, at the beginning, it's been like twenty four years. When I first started, we didn't draw custom tattoos. Mm -hmm. because customers would never get custom tattoos it would be insane to expect someone to draw something for you and then you get it because you don't know this person's style it's idiotic you go into a shop you look at the art that's there and you pick a piece you like that's the only way to get a piece that you know you like of course mm -hmm. right so that's like what they literally that that was the mindset and then um you know, Guy Atchison came along and he made his like book that was like huge. And uh, now everyone loves that like, Guy Atchison, right? Then mm -hmm. tattooers were like, this fucking guy coming in trying to ruin the industry. Like people hated him at first. Mm -hmm. He was like, it was like really intense. People were like, he's a scammer coming in to try to steal all the money. And then it went from that to people, some people, starting to draw custom stuff and some people not um and my friend nick uh nick baxter he uh he started getting into tattooing and he started doing like these realism tattoos um and he was one of the very first realism tattooers that existed um it was him and like another couple of people that were all working in connecticut doing like realism and that really changed tattooing everyone started being like well i want to try realism and the wave of tattoos that came out at that time period which was like i don't know maybe 2001 uh no uh yeah about 2001 2002 mm -hmm. they were the most disgusting tattoos you've ever seen <laughs> because all of a sudden every tattooer is trying realism and as you know as someone who does realism the first like year of doing realism is just bad yeah. um, so yeah. every, every tattooer that exists just were like let's try barfing this out um oh my god every, it's exactly what it looks like is barf <laughs> i was like barf you feel me um uh, and nick actually nick is really good um so he his stuff was like good but he was he um was he was like becoming a famous artist beca before he became a tattoo before he became a tattoo artist so his style was like he knew how to simplify it and make it realism while like lining some stuff like he really is 
one of the first people to successfully do that style. And um, he's actually changed his style to be a little away from realism now. But at the time, he kind of like, I don't want to say he invented realism, but like, he was one of the first like inventors of like realism tattooing because he was a fine artist. Um, But seeing that, like, so we went through that phase and then everyone's like, oh, do this. And everyone went to that. And then, um, you know, the tattoo gathering happened, which is, that was by, um, what's his face? Um, I can't remember his name, but that was in Massachusetts in like every like realist, realism tattooer went every like good tattoo, like, and you look at the names of the first people who went and it was like just insane. Um, but that was amazing. And people, that was the first like learning experience. That was like Mm -hmm. the inspiration to like all these explorers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That first like tattoo gathering was like really the beginning of like, Hey, what if we brought education into this? Yeah. Um, and people just started getting inspired. And Mm -hmm. so we went in, you know, 2000 to literally just doing flash off the walls to, 2004 where everyone's doing just fully custom stuff like Mm -hmm. in such a short time and then it's like what was it 2010 when all of a sudden everyone's doing ipads yeah like oh my god it's like seriously like a 10-year period where it was like only doing flash off the walls having to draw stuff and then just like now using an ipad so it's Mm -hmm. like we have had like a renaissance in our tattooing industry in the 20 years that I've been doing it where it's just such greatly changing and now Mm. we're in a place where there's not a ton that we can go forward without going sideways Mm. you know and I feel Mm -hmm. like that's what you're doing that's what Rosabit's doing that's what a lot of people are doing um but tattooers are not happy about it yeah. And it's you, like, a yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember when I first started doing it, like uh, teaching social media just in general in like 2020, it was, I got so much shit, so much shit. People were like, shut the fuck up. Nobody fucking cares. Like it's easy. Da, 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 this, that. And I was just like, no, <laughs> it's not, you know? And I was, I was like, no, I'm going to continue on. And and there was a lot of shit that, and I, I don't get as much of it anymore. I think it's just like my community is just where that's like all I see. I don't really give a shit if anything else right. happens outside of that. But like at this point, you know, you do, you have to have like really tough skin and then, um, you know, and as, and as it grows in, you know, this is where it's just, I think moral of the story is really, it's just like, hold true to what feels really passionate for you. Yeah. And like, think about it in, in a long-term type of way, because right. at the end of the day, like if you're not feeling it and you're willing to put your shit out there, it's like, you're going to get backlash no matter what, it doesn't matter what right. you do or who you are. So it has to, you have to love it. Like you just have to love it and you have to see the longevity in it. And um, I think that that in and of itself, that's what's going to create change. Yeah. I think it, I think it will definitely will grow, but we'll see you know, much like the politics where you see it like back step a little and then grow and then back step a little. So it definitely yeah. gets a little hard in spots, but yeah. yeah. But definitely been interesting seeing it from this like long perspective of being like, you know, literally no customer would ever even consider. Like, I remember being like, what if I added to your tattoo and I just drew this and people would be like, you <laughs> no, but this is what I want. <laughs> no, this is exactly like this you can change the purple to blue you know fuck yeah but like <laughs> it's it's that's crazy dude like I I like I can only I would just I think there's a, a another conversation we should have on just like because like how knowledgeable you are on the changes and like you just <laughs> your observation of like I'm like fuck yeah like you're rem- you're reminding yeah. me and I've well, only I'm been for like 12 so yeah well you joined up you joined up at like kind of a great time because you joined I did. Up like you were like joining in when it was like the height of the growing mm-hmm. um, whereas like since I joined when it was like it had been the same for like it had been the same for like 50 years in our country you know and yeah. then all of a sudden I mean even look at our machines like oh my god you know, like crazy yeah I just took a jewelry class and the lady was like oh you're really good at soldering and I was like oh I've soldered 
ten hundred thousand needles. <laughs> and do you know like most tattooers haven't so I haven't soldered yeah. a needle in like twelve years, yeah. fifteen years maybe, and there's no need to. Um, I'm not. I'm not like one of those tattooers who are like everyone should solder, but um we couldn't get like you literally could not buy box needles Mm -hmm. it didn't exist when I started tattooing you literally had to make them yourself or you could not tattoo so every tattoo that I did every part of it was like made by in like machines there was like definitely some machine builders but it was like if you didn't know them well enough they wouldn't sell you one yeah so you would have like yeah, so you would have to like buy the parts and build your machine too. Mm-hmm. So it was like jan- my first machine was so janky, I don't even understand how I like even <laughs> I mean even even now like I I remember there was the times where I think before I even like officially became a tattooist and I was like oh I was 3 years looking for an apprenticeship and I was getting really disheartened and mm-hmm. um so I was like let me I you know buy a machine not fucking amazon like that wasn't there for you in the beginning for no. yourself and so but when i did oh god i i when i did that i remember thinking like oh no i'm never gonna tattoo i fucking hate this like i'm never gonna like i just did not understand it at all so right. i was like nope and then thankfully i was able to like land an apprenticeship but no i, I see like there's so many different and then now it's just like i think technology technology wise there's so much going on and it's getting so different so yeah it's just been it's it's been a fucking long ass ride and I definitely think yeah. that is up for a, a good conversation just to, <laughs> just for history lesson reasons yeah but um uh, but um I do I do want to say like um I don't want to spend expend any more of your time and energy but I really really fucking appreciate you and that last half of that fucking talk man that was like where the real juice was at <laughs> Uh, dude well I appreciate you and um I hope that you have a really fucking beautiful day thank you You again for for being here (laughs) yeah well have a good day enjoy hopefully it's nice weather yeah it's a little gloomy but you know what that's okay I like it whatever (laughs) (laughs) Whatever, right all right girl I'll see you later I'll see you later (laughs) Bye. bye